American people have common sense. They see the facts. They see that there was a laptop. There was the eyewitness. There was the emails. There are all these suspicious activity reports. We have the majority. Bring them in front of Congress. Do the depositions that need to be done so we can get the facts. Congressman Jim Jordan not only promising to investigate Hunter Biden, but saying that his party would hold the FBI accountable. The agency is accused, some of uh, members of the agency accused of suppressing information from Hunter's laptop ahead of the 2020 election. And then there was, of course, the participation of social media in that effort as well. So federal prosecutors reportedly have enough evidence to slap the president's son with tax charges or gun charges, potentially. Former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says she doesn't think any of this is news. Investigators believe they do have enough evidence to charge Hunter Biden. How large is this looming over the president, over Democrats broadly? I looked at a bunch of local uh, front pages uh, yeah. this morning. And if you look at the front page in Nevada, they're talking about Trump's rally there. If you look at the front pages in Pennsylvania, they're talking about Mastriano. As much as there was so much news happening in Washington this week, it doesn't always translate and often doesn't translate to what voters are talking about in states. And I think that's what we're seeing currently. Oh, Joe Concha, Fox News mm -hmm. contributor and media columnist for The Hill, yeah. joins me now. Uh, Joe, Jen Psaki says it, it doesn't rate as a story. Um, mm -hmm. Clearly, that's what happened before the election. There was a lot of effort to make sure that it didn't rate as a story, and it sounds like yeah. some of that is continuing. I, I love her reasoning here, Martha. The Hunter Biden story is only a minor inside baseball thing because she doesn't see the story on front pages of newspapers throughout the country. Well, yeah, of course she doesn't. Uh, the media is running the same playbook it ran in October of 2020, mostly dismiss what is a major story. It could be the biggest story of this presidency if Joe Biden received 10 percent of profits as the big guy, which Hunter Biden's business partner, Tony Bobulinski, a former lieutenant in the Navy, is alleging. And if and when the GOP takes back the House and Increasingly, that looks like it'll be the case. Uh, as Jim Jordan said, that will be one of the first orders of business to launch hearings and investigations into this. And that will make things very uncomfortable for Hunter Biden, but also James Biden, the president's brother, President Biden, obviously, and FBI Director Chris Wray, who needs to answer some serious questions on why his agency doesn't appear to be very interested in pursuing all the leads courtesy of that laptop from hell and its contents. Tony Bobulinski himself says that he hasn't heard from the FBI since bringing it to their attention uh, since October of 2020. He's not heard from them. Why is that? Those are the questions that That's Jim Jordan and others will be asking. You would think they would at least want him to come in uh, for a little bit of a chat after sure. all of that. Um, so we have seen it many times, the president sort of blowing off questions from White House reporters. Saturday Night Live jumped on this bandwagon, raising some questions about the president's mental acuity as well during their weekend update. Here's what they did on Saturday Night Watch. President Biden pardoned thousands of convicted marijuana users, and it feels like maybe he celebrated with them a little because yesterday Biden gave a speech at a car factory and opened with this. Let me start off with two words, made in America. <laughs> Biden was then heard criticizing reporters at the White House for shouting questions at him. Questions like, what year is it? And who's the current president? <laughs> also, they weren't reporters, they were doctors. Hmm. Joe, what do you think? That was one of the best Saturday Night Lives I have seen probably since the Will Ferrell era. And it only took 21 months into this presidency, but, but it appears Saturday Night Live has finally got the memo of who is actually in power, and his name isn't Donald Trump. It's Joe Biden. And, and when it comes to providing copious amounts of comedic material, as we just saw there, it's the current guy occupying the, the Oval Office. And, and I also think that probably SNL, Martha, they looked at the horrific ratings for the soon-to-depart mm -hmm. Trevor Noah, Noah on The Daily Show, Samantha B, Colbert, Kimmel, Seth Meyers, all losing more and more of their audiences while also Serving as progressive activists and predictable ones at that. And nothing in comedy is, is worse than knowing what's coming before so it is ever said. So, yes, yeah. SNL still continue to hit Trump, absolutely. But, yeah, finally, Biden uh, gets the treatment that he deserves, given all the gaps and all the things well, that he says that makes you, you shake know, your head. I, I mean, SNL was at its best when it was sort of an equal opportunity offender. And I think that's what people yeah. connect with. They want to see um, fun poked at the president, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, uh, in yeah. different situations. 
situations. And, you know, when it became so painfully clear which side of the fence they were on, I think it became less funny to, to a lot of folks. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is a trend. Um, another big thing that's going on is climate activists. We saw them run across the football field here last weekend, and now they have new tactics. Demonstrators going into stores and dumping milk all over the floors. Shoppers confused about what was going on. The protesters are members of Animal Rebellion and Animal, Animal Rights and Climate Change Organization. According to the group, they're highlighting the need to go green and avoid exploiting animals. Joe Concha, what say you about this current trend? I hope these folks were arrested and, and go to jail because the people that work at that store now, they got to clean all that up. In other words, there needs to be consequences. I'm not saying, you know, put them away for life type of thing, but there needs to be some sort of repercussions when you do this, go into a store, take milk, which is very expensive these days at last check, and then the, those poor people that work there are going to have to clean all that up. So I, I hope that's something where you send a message that there is no tolerance for anything like this. And I'm not really sure that this is going to help the cause, whatever that may be in these situations. It'll mm -hmm. probably have a boomerang effect because this just looks silly. Yeah, they damaged product. They damaged carpets, um, and yeah. uh, I'm told that they were uh, they were arrested for this. So okay. well, it'll be interesting to see what the ramifications are. That that, that is in London. Uh, there were no NFL players around apparently in the store <laughs> to tackle them, as we saw happen here. Um, so it's uh, it's interesting to see. Joe, thanks yeah. very much.